Schwartz here with Marty Music, hanging out in Nashville with my good buddy, Rhett Scholl. We're just doing some talking, just some chit chat. Yeah. You know, tone talk. Tone talk. Tone talk, but tone it's not talk. a series. No. Don't worry. Not yet. Don't worry, not yet, right. So glad to have you, man, Thanks visiting. Having, man. Uh, yeah. It's always fun to hang and to jam. And what I was thinking in this video is, let's just catch up and let the people you know, eavesdrop. Okay. How about that? Great. I've been asking different artists this. What was the first, we're gonna go with solo. What was the first solo you ever remember learning? The intro solo to Wish You Were Here. Yeah. Like that? So when you were first learning guitar, what was the band that you listened to that connected to that? Well, a lot of, like I said, Pink Floyd and, and that stuff and Hendrix early on, the first record I ever bought was the early days of iTunes. I, I spent $10 on the Hendrix blues compilation, you know? Yeah, yeah, I didn't know anything about blues or blues guitar or any of that stuff. I just really loved the sound and still do. So a lot of that Hendrix stuff. And then ironically, Dave Matthews Band Live at Central Park record because mm -hmm. Warren Haynes was on that. I would learn how to solo by playing Cortez the Killer, their version of Cortez the Killer, because Warren Haynes takes this like epic you know, solo and E minor pentatonic and, you know. Dug a lot out of that. Yeah, exactly. Oh, that's uh, that's awesome. I learned to solo in the beginning mostly to Dickie Betts. Oh yeah, okay. So like, even when I, there's times where I'm doing a Metallica riff and it's like, kind of sounds like the Allman Brothers playing Metallica. <laughs> I was gonna say, knowing you're playing, that checks out. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, there's definitely that. We wear them on our sleeves. Yeah. Yeah, it's okay, it's okay. Rocking the Les Pauls. Have you covered Hendrix songs ever? Like in the bands that you were touring with? Yeah, well, not in the bands I was touring with. With, but when the pandemic hit, we did this live stream thing on my channel for the better part of a year. We called it Backstage Live, and I put a band together for that. Yeah, like I saw that. My, my like dream band, basically. Everyone was available. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nobody really had anything going on, which was weird. But we did a whole episode of Hendrix covers, and we did like Stone Free and Boxy Lady, and if Six was Nine. But we kind of like reimagined them through that group of people. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. And that was a ton of fun to play. You know what I like is and you probably talking about Hendrix, but we're on Les Paul's, is the C sharp. Yeah. yeah. You've got the open E as the minor yeah, third. Yeah. My favorite Hendrix song though is I still, like, that was, when I learned that, that was when I really locked in that first inversion chord shape, which I use all the time. Yeah, it's my favorite chord, basically. Yeah. <laughs> it just works in so many situations, man. So back to the last video, last time we got together, we shot a video with my guitar teacher from mm -hmm. college where I really learned all my fundamentals, Chris Sherlin, shout out. and. I still remember him uh, teaching me that and showing me that it came from the G chord. Yeah. But now my term for it is the Hendrix major. Yeah. I just have certain things. I say the Hendrix chord, the Hendrix major. Right. Which is always going to be the in 
version, but it pops up in so many other things. Yeah, speaking of that, like a variation of that, Tom Bukovac. Um, yes. I watch yeah. his channel a lot, and I try and pick stuff up from just watching his intros. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's one of my favorite players because he never noodles. Everything he plays is musical, even mm -hmm. when he's just messing around. And he kind of does a variation of that. So instead of playing the, like a B major triad there, a lot of times he'll do that. And it's, it's super interesting because it's like, it's that same kind of thing just without the third. Oh yeah, 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 gotcha. Right? But I think it's so cool because like I would never think to, to go there with it. Yeah. challenging myself with like new voicings or mm -hmm. new scales or like well I'm the same way I, I'm really more interested in sounds now I think I've gotten where I want to be mostly as a player when it comes to technique and and like approach and my knowledge of the fretboard and everything obviously there's always more stuff to learn as, sure. as you grow but like in terms of my sound I think I've got it under my hands and now it's more about like refining that and then finding other ways of making the guitar sound interesting and intriguing from a recording perspective yeah I'm really interested in that stuff I, I listen to a lot of records that I'm I just try and dig into where how did they get that guitar sound like that you yeah know? I don't know in the next year what are you what are the main projects you're going to be working on finishing the studio first and foremost at, at our house and then I've got a few things going on so I've been playing with an artist named Noah Guthrie for the better part of a decade now and this year we're going to be spending more time just working on singles and then not only recording the music but videoing and like sort of vlogging the whole process and the idea is we drop the single and there's a whole sort of making of video that goes along with it and mm -hmm. putting them out every you know six eight weeks or was like noah that. who you went on tour with when you used that drone for that drone video oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. i remember going oh this kid's good <laughs> <laughs> yeah if you're not good just get a drone and you'll, uh, yeah. no i was like okay all right the the, the, the climate is changing you yeah. know my first youtube lessons i would say hey what's up you guys marty schwartz here and it would be my laptop camera mm -hmm pointed at me open on a like a one of those like high school music stands yep. and be like hey okay we're going to learn this Hendrix song right now let's zoom in and then i would get up and i would just drag it the laptop forward until i got the right angle zoomed in and i would just cut that out in the edit so i didn't even wasn't even using that camera i watched a lot of those videos back in the day i didn't realize that it was just your webcam the next phase was like a giant like rca like really expensive at the time but like it had the, the tape in it oh wow and i would shoot it this is when i was making courses like shot like an hour's worth of courses. And I would go upstairs, I had a cheaper camcorder mm -hmm. that I'd put the tape into and it was hooked up to the laptop. I like took the tape and had to play, hit play in real time and it digitized onto the laptop before I would then edit Dude, a YouTube video. That's a really efficient use of time. Well, then I'd go down and shoot more with, cause remember I said it was the cheaper camera. So I still- And you had tapes, so you just drop a new tape in the, oh, okay. Yeah. All right, yeah. I get it. Yeah, 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 but I remember they're about that big, and uh, I'm sure the tape gave you some really nice like saturation and. Yeah, I don't know, man. I thought the tape courses just sounded a little better, you know. Well, we, yeah, analog. Yeah, it's uh, analog, man. You know, so they're not, they don't really have the same feel now. <laughs>
to thank my good buddy, Rhett Scholl, for hanging out again. Check the link in the description below for his YouTube channel and his other wonderful platforms. TikTok? Sort of. <laughs> Maybe. Yes! <laughs> All right, we'll see you guys later. Take care.